Hey, what is going on guys? It's your boy Puddle and today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own custom texture packs. We're going to be in the 16x resolution for today, but for my next episode in the series, I'm going to show you guys how to use higher resolutions like 32x all the way to 512. So even though this is 16x, it's a very good way to start out making texture packs and anyone who starts making texture packs may want to start in 16x because it's the easiest way to learn. It's also really simple to start out making a sword, as certain textures like bows and armor are a little bit more difficult. So I'll show you guys how to make swords today, and I got way more things to show you, like golden apples, armor, GUI, uh, status bar, and way more. The first thing I'm going to talk about is that there are actually a lot of ways to make unique swords personalized to your own style and texture pack. Here we've got five different texture packs that have diamond swords. And it's all 16x, but you can see the difference between the two packs. This is the Shant 5, this is Scotty's 20k, this is my own texture pack that I made, and this is Gumbeck's texture pack. All of them are quite different from each other, despite being the same resolution and having a lot of the same styles as handles and, and, and blades go, they're actually way different between the five different types. In order to make your own texture pack, you are going to need Paint.net. It's a free program. You can find the download link in the description. It's what I use for all of my textures and things like that. It's super easy to download. Just download it, open it up, and you're good to go. Once you have Paint.net open, go to File, hit the New button, and you're going to go for the width and height of 16 by 16, which is the resolution for the best FPS in Minecraft. Once you get that open, it's going to first be super small, like this, but if you hit control on your keyboard and you use your scroll wheel, or you can hit the plus button, it'll actually increase the size to where it zooms in. This is actually a lot faster than like hitting the zoom key like over and over again. You can just do control, plus or minus, or control in your scroll wheel. Right away, you're going to use the select tool and you're going to delete everything so the background is 100% transparent. When making a texture pack from scratch, it's always good to get inspiration from other textures that have already been made. Make sure to give credit if you think you've copied someone enough or if you're making an edit to their textures. But in today's video, I'm just going to show you guys how to make a similar sword to some of these. When you start, you're going to use the pencil tool and since 16x is so small, you guys can see that you're not even going to be needing anything other than the pencil tool for the majority of your texture. About 99% of swords start with this square on the very bottom. They go up by about 1, 2, 3 pixels tall and then you make your handle. It's worth mentioning that no matter what you do with a sword, handle, and blade in 16x, that you're going to have copied somebody unintentionally because everything's been done before and nothing's really new. It's not until you get into higher resolutions that you're able to get completely creative and completely customize your own stuff. I hear people all the time say that latency totally copied their texture pack, but in reality, the texture pack design had been made like three years ago because 16x is so simple. When making the handle, it's all about your own personal preference and what you would like to have for the handle. You can make them taller or shorter based on what your personal preference is. Like right here you can go high or you could go straight across. Or if you wanted to, you could go with a lower handle like this. That's like three different types right there, but they're all very similar to each other. I'll show you guys a few different handles so you guys can see that there aren't a whole lot of variations, but you can find something that you personally like the best. This one's kind of cool in my opinion, and we may end up going with this one for our finished product, but I'll show you guys one more. With any of these handles you're making, you can obviously change things once you've already made them. For like this right here, we could technically edit it to be a little bit wider, like I'm going to do now. That was a super small change, but as you can see, it does look a lot different, so definitely don't be afraid to mess around and keep on going until you find what you want. Now for the blade, we're going to use the line slash curve tool. You're going to hold down the shift key while clicking this, that way it makes an actual perfect line. 
and you can choose whether you want it to be a taller or a shorter blade. I'll show you guys a taller blade and a shorter blade. Now we have a pretty long blade, but we can make this shorter just by taking the pencil tool and connecting it down lower, and then erasing the top part. And now you can see the difference between a super short sword and a decently long sword. I'm gonna go with somewhere in the middle to get a medium length. Whether you copied me pixel by pixel or made your own, you can still color them the exact same way. So let's get on to the coloring part right now. When coloring a sword, there are a bunch of options you can choose between. I'm going to go over just a few different ones you can use. I'm just going to grab a few uh, nice colors here for a diamond sword. You can actually mix the values up by going into the more section and grabbing different colors, which is what we're going to use right now. So to get a pretty cool uh, fade out color, I'm going to use this blue right here. I'm going to use the line tool. I'm going to hold shift on the third row. See, it's actually, it's one row, then two rows, and then three rows. So I consider it to be three different rows, and for each row, I use a different color. For the first row, I just hold shift, and I drag this bad boy up there, and I hit enter, and now he's locked in. To make this more interesting, I'm going to use the slider tool and make it a slightly darker blue. And now when I use the same line tool, I get a different gradient type color. And I can do it one more time now after pressing enter, I can go to an even darker shade, not by too much. And there is actually a pretty good looking sword. This is a dark blue sword right here. And that was just by using three different colors with the line tool. If you want a really smooth gradient, you can actually choose two different colors once again on your colors thing. I mean, I will get this blue right here, and then I'll probably switch to a more light colored blue. Uh, that's pretty good difference on those two right there. Once you've got those two colors, you want to get your magic wand tool. You can just click where there is a transparent background. If you press the G key, or if you go to the gradient tool, you can hold it down and you can actually make it to whatever gradient you want. You can go from the top to the bottom to get this kind of lighter gradient going down to a darker shade. Or you could go from the bottom to the top, which I think actually looks pretty sick. This part isn't necessary, but I've saved both of the blades on two different layers. So you can see that this is the second blade we made, and this is the first blade we made. If I was going to make like a super serious texture pack, I'd probably try to mix and match which blade I thought was better by seeing which one looked best to me. And for this texture pack, I think I'm going to go with the gradient tool. For other ones, I would kind of use this dark blue one, but I don't know. This looks pretty sick in my opinion, so we're going to use this one instead. Now that we're on to the handle, it's exactly the same thing as we did with the blade. You're just going to highlight it with the magic wand tool. You're going to pick two different colors that you think are going to go well for like a handle. And then you're going to either gradient them or use your line tool or pencil to do whatever you think looks best. This is a tough call, dude. I don't know which one looks better, dude. I don't know. Tell me in the comments which one you think is the better blade. Or the better handle, I mean. I personally, I'm gonna go with the first one. I think this one looks a lot better uh, for the muted colors. So I'm gonna use this one. This is already looking pretty sick, and I definitely think this will make a good sword. We're basically done here, but there are a few things you can do to make it even more special and unique. One of the things is changing the outer color of the diamond sword up top where the blade is. I'm talking about these pixels right here. You may want to have a gradient on those as well. By highlighting the dark part of the blade, which is black, I can now use the same thing by getting the gradient tool that I want and just gradient the blade, but I want to make sure it's not too different from the initial black color. So I'll probably just use a regular color of black and then I'll use something similar inside the blade with the color picker tool. I chose the darkest blue from the top of the blade and then the black for the bottom of the blade and I just kind of faded it upwards. And I think it looks a lot cooler now. This looks really good in my opinion, so I'm pretty pleased with the result. Now all that's left for me to do is just save the file as diamond underscore sword.png 
and I'm going to drag that file into my texture pack folder for my test pack. I always have a texture pack folder as a test pack so I can just load it up and see what textures I've been making so far to see if they look good. So now that I put that in there, I'm going to go in game and I'm going to see what it looks like. But if you guys need help on how to put these inside texture pack folders or whatever, let me know in the comments section. I can either write you a comment back or make a future video on how to get all of the files and folders fixed. Here we are in game with the texture pack loaded in. And I gotta say, this actually looks pretty sick, dude. I really like the pack. I mean, this is a really cool looking sword. It's got a lot of cool themes, like kind of like an ocean theme here. But I'll drop it on the ground so you guys can see just what it looks like. It looks really nice in my opinion, and it was super easy to make. I may have gone a little overboard on the tutorial, but it doesn't take long at all. Nowadays, I can make a 16x16 16 16 diamond sword in probably like 5 or 10 minutes, and it doesn't actually look bad at all. Like I said at the beginning, if you guys want to see more tutorials on how to make texture packs, whether that be different resolutions or how to make a bow or a fishing rod or food items or potions or whatever, I can show you guys tutorials on that or higher resolutions from 32 to 512. I can show you guys how to use the files and the folders, how to make animated textures and all that stuff. So if you have any interest, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. Also, let me know what you guys thought of the sword. I thought it was pretty sick. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like or subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace out.